Hello there. Welcome to our Obi Wan Kenobi <laughs> season one episode six finale review. See, uh, we waited the whole season to do the hello there thing. It has not been <laughs> overdone. The show itself was also like, you know what? We can't we can't lean too much into the meme. We're just gonna put it right near the end of the show. Very satisfying. Lots to get into here. Yeah, there is lots to get into here. Liam Neeson, he's back because you can't have a show about someone's daughter being taken. And Liam Neeson's not part. <laughs> Of it. Even, even even when Liam Neeson's character is dead, that is not stopping him. No, it is not. It was cool to see him back. No, we'll talk about his particular set of skills and so much more within this video. But go ahead, hit that subscribe button, you know, because there is a lot more happening within the Star Wars universe. Obi-Wan Kenobi is not the end. There is Andor. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, the Mandalorian's coming back next year. You know, Ahsoka's in production. So there is so much good stuff coming down the pipeline. But before we get into all of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are here all the time talking about all kinds of shows every week we have lots of videos up we're going to be talking about better call Saul coming up next month we've yep. got only murders in the building coming up next week yeah. we have animal kingdom it's already airing really yep. really good final season so yeah hit that subscribe button okay so i think just big picture there's a lot of stuff to like about this finale. I think there's some really intense battle scenes. I mean, ultimately, we all knew that Luke and Leia were going to be fine. So that part of it was just sort of like, eh, all right. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that the writers kind of were going to have a challenge with, with this yeah. whole series is that we know Vader gets out alive. We know Obi-Wan's going to be alive. We know yeah. that Luke and Leia, they're going to be alive. And because of that, you know, it felt like it was going to be a challenge for them to really put stakes on it on their lives and you know if they're being hunted what's gonna happen or the big vader obi-wan battle i was like okay listen we we know neither of them are gonna die so how are they legitimately gonna get out of this where i believe it it was i think it's tricky like it's very difficult with a show like this to sort of connect all the dots properly but I do think that the final showdown between Obi-Wan and Vader, if we're just talking about from an action standpoint, like, forget everything else, like, Vader burying Obi-Wan alive, and then Obi-Wan then finding a way to get out of that, and then, like, him having, like, all the rocks and debris he's just, like, throwing at Vader, like, that was really darn cool. A 10 out of 10, this whole season with all these battles, especially the battles with Vader. They have done such a good job of having me invested, even though I know, yeah. you know, Obi-Wan's not going to die. It was still thrilling to see all that happen. Him cutting Vader's helmet like that and actually seeing, you know, who he thinks is his friend still there and be like, oh my goodness, Anakin, like, I'm so sorry. I was like, oh my goodness, because when this whole fight started i love that they just got into it i was kind of like are they gonna have like a big talk about yeah. this like uh whatever whatever and they're just like you here to kill me hell yeah i'm here to kill you <laughs> all right let's get to it i was like okay here we go this felt a lot more realistic to real life i mean i'm not I know this will be a surprise. I'm not somebody who has gotten into a lot of fights or instigated a lot of fights in my life. Why are you pretend? Yeah, I, I know. Look at look at You're me, everybody. Fighter. Okay, no the oh, no. the thing is that this whole situation is just that in life nobody's gonna like get in front of somebody and be like, "I'm about to fight you," and here's all the reasons <laughs> I'm about to fight you. It's like this is actually what would probably happen, except with lightsabers and force powers involved. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've seen, we've all seen those shows where, you know, the villain's going to have a big talk, the hero's going to have a big talk, and it all gets kind of muddled up with that. That's why I was just like, I really like this. You here to kill me? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm here to kill you. Okay, cool. Let's get at it. Yeah. I was like, yes, exactly right. And they took the right moment, too, for when it was time to have that talk, which is where, you know, he sliced Vader's helmet and he could see him and was just like, oh, oh my good. Okay, listen, Anakin, now I can see you. Let's have this talk. I am really sorry where he's kind of like, listen, like, 
I'm not your failure here. I, you know, Anakin is gone and not because you did something because I did something. He's gone. I'm only, you know, Darth Vader now. He's like, all right, Darth. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have, I guess, the real formal introduction between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. And then Obi-Wan at the end of all this. All right, then he just leaves. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> yeah. this because I was, again, like really like, okay, how are the writers going to get out of this in a way that's really satisfying where they're not just doing this, where they're kind of like, okay, I'm just going to walk away. And I know Obi-Wan's not somebody who goes around just killing everybody, but at the same time, his friend is dead. He has said it. I've killed Anakin. Anakin is gone. He no longer exists. It's only me. We've seen Obi-Wan be like, okay, I accept this. Hello, Darth. I, I get it now. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to just walk away. And knowing that Darth Vader has killed Jedis, he's killed children, he's he has massacred tons and tons and tons of people, and he's going to continue to do it if you leave him alive. And it was just weird to me that he just decided to walk away from it to kind of be like, ah, I've done enough damage. I'm just gonna leave you alive. And this moment is really important because we know that Darth Vader goes on to do a bunch more horrible things. And if Obi-Wan had taken care of him in that moment, that would have been it, right? Yeah. And we know that he couldn't because we know what happens, but there had to be a really good reason. And like a couple minutes later, they gave it where we saw Obi-Wan, he's in his ship, and then he gets this feeling that Luke's in trouble. I'm like, man, you guys needed to put that like two minutes before, right when he's about to finish off Vader, and then he has to make a choice, Vader or Luke, and you know he's going to pick Luke. It would have made so much more sense if they did that. And, you know, I, I don't even care that people would probably be uh, would do the whole, oh, you know, it's that's a coincidental timing. But it's like, you know what? You guys had five coincidental timing moments in, like, that big escape from the fortress earlier this season. I would have been fine with just one that would have completely justified <laughs> the story and the decision that Obi-Wan made. And, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I... I still have the biggest problem with Vader not killing Reva just because Vader is a freaking killer. But even still, this is a very precarious situation for Obi-Wan. And I think if he's not going to kill Vader, I think he needs to do something to make sure that Vader can't hurt anybody else anymore. Like, I don't know if there's like a prison that you could even put Vader in or whatever else. But it's just sort of like you can't. You can't leave this guy <laughs> fluttering in the wind. Like, I just wonder by the time we get years down the road and he's still seeing Vader do horrible things, it's like, how much regret is going to be in your heart for this, Obi-Wan? Yeah, you know, you guys are Jedis. Yeah. You, you are able to kill people. You're not Batman where you're kind of <laughs> like, okay, I'm not going to kill anybody, but, you know, I'll break all your arms off. But it's just like... It, you're you're here to to protect people and you're not protecting anybody by leaving him alive so i was kind of like okay uh i don't know <laughs> i'm guessing that they probably think okay this is a a fate worse than death for vader he's suffering he has to live with the failure of not being able to defeat obi-wan on multiple occasions like okay yeah that's great that will mentally torment him but it's also going to mentally torment all of the people whose like families he tears apart because he killed people but that's the thing about anakin and darth vader he gets tormented by these thoughts and it makes him angrier and it makes him more powerful and i mean obi-wan knows this about him Okay, Hayden Christensen, how is he feeling about the fact that I've seen all this promotion for him on this? Oh, no. How much face time did Hayden actually have? Like five minutes across the entirety of this season? Yeah, about as much as Liam Neeson at the end of this. <laughs> uh, Qui-Gon, qui you know. It that was so cool. It was really nice to see, you know, Obi-Wan go through all of this where we had seen him trying to talk to him, trying to reach out to him, trying yeah. to feel that he was there and to have him show up at the end and kind of be like, I've always been here. You just kind of needed to get through this to be able to see me and see them, see him walk off into, you know, the distance there into new adventures, <laughs> maybe season two. Okay. <laughs> The other, I th the big mystery going into this finale, of course, was what happened to Reva? Does she survive? Mm -hmm. Does she make it through all this? And it's a little bit of, 
you know, great news and questionable news. Like, the great news here is obviously that Reva is still alive. She has sort of realized she doesn't want to be like Vader. She doesn't want to kill young Luke Skywalker. I mean, the biggest question that I just sort of have out of all of this is she did just basically terrorize this entire family and cause, like, Luke to be running off into the desert. And it's like, you guys are fine to just, like, letting her go at this point? I think it's, you know, I really liked what they did with Reva here because she really is a, a tormented character where yeah. she's, you know, everything that happened to her when she was a young Jedi, then she ends up getting this position where she's really close to Vader, where then she's getting really conflicted. Like, yeah, she's there for revenge and she wants to be able to kill Vader, but she's been part of the Empire for a long time, working very closely with him, being sort of indoctrined into all this stuff. So by the time she ends up getting to this point where she's like, okay, I'm going to go kill young Luke. And because she's still like struggling with that, you know, like a, I had my chance to kill Vader. Man, I messed it up, but I still have this mission that is for Vader. And seeing that sort of push and pull against her was really interesting to watch. It was really interesting to watch, and I think Moses Ingram was awesome in this finale. Yeah. They've given her some really good stuff to yeah. do. It is also, okay, last episode, Reva was, like, seemingly near death. It's like, not only does she manage to get to Tatooine, she doesn't even seem to be really acknowledging, ow, like, I'm still hurting because of what happened. It's the Force. The That's always kind of the answer for everything. If you can't explain it, it's the Force. Yeah, well, this is this is the thing we all have to remember with Star Wars is that, number one, they're very hesitant to kill anyone off, clearly, mm -hmm. based on everything we've seen here. And number two... You just forget some of the small details along the way. You're just, okay, Reva's there. She's fine. She's going to, you know, not kill Luke. She's going to bring Luke back. I, I did appreciate that it wasn't like some big fight between Reva and Obi-Wan, that this was yeah. like a decision that she actively made herself. Yeah, no, it was good to see that she came to terms with her own sort of inner torment of what she wanted to do and the path she wanted to take. So they've left that open as well. As of right now, this recording, there isn't anything out there about a Reva spinoff. That doesn't mean that there won't yeah. be, you know, down the road. Or if there is an Obi-Wan season two, that maybe she shows up in that. I'm really curious because, you know, she seemingly, she leaves her weapon behind. It's mm -hmm. like she has decided, okay, I the future is wide open in yep. front of me. And I, I definitely think redemption is possible for a character like her. Yeah, and it's uh, she's such a cool character too because there's no real like canon behind yeah. her. She's a brand new character. So if they do decide to do some sort of spinoff here, I mean, it really <laughs> is wide open to all kinds of cool stuff. All right, so since we are talking here about season two, this is the, this is my big platform for this, is that, you know, it was really fun seeing little Princess Leia in oh, this. Like, oh my goodness, with her little blaster hole. I know. She's like, it's empty. You think I'm going to give you a blaster? And we know her blaster skills later yeah. in life. So I was just like, oh, this is such a cool moment. Like, it was so much fun having her on this show. And I think they did such a great job with the casting and the writing of this character. But with all of that being said, we got to leave the Skywalker stuff behind if we're doing a season two. Like, the more we sort of focus on... Luke and Leia in the Obi-Wan show, I think the harder it's going to be to sort of buy into everything that happens, you know, in the original trilogy and all that down the road. Like, I want a season two, but mm -hmm. Obi-Wan has other things in his life beyond just Luke and Leia. And the ending of this episode with Qui-Gon really sort of suggests that, that he's forging his own path. Like, I, I want to explore some of these different things. I want to see more of who this guy is. Yeah, and it'll be interesting, too, because we saw that scene with Darth Vader as well, where he's talking to the Emperor, where he's just like, wherever he is in the universe, I'm going to find him. And the Emperor's kind of be like, L uh, let's rein you in a little <laughs> bit here. Like, yeah. remember that you're working for me, and you're working for the Empire, and your loyalties to me. I'm your master, so reel this in. It's not about Obi-Wan. I need you on other stuff. And straight away, Vader was like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's, like, I'm sure there's a chance Vader could show up again down the road, but he doesn't need to be the focus of everything with Obi-Wan either. It's just sort of like the way that I'm looking at things now after this finale is like, you have this incredible character and, you know, Ewan McGregor can play anything. So it's just like, why not use him 
as a vessel to sort of tackle other things in the universe, maybe mm -hmm. connected to some other properties. I think we would all want to see something more of this care. And I, we don't need to put Luke Skywalker or Princess Leia on it for us to be like, oh, well, now I'm watching. We're going to watch anyway. Yeah, they've done a good job doing that. We've all, we already have the Mandalorian yeah. where we have, you know, Baby Yoda and Mando going around. Yeah. You know, we had this season where it was kind of a Obi-Wan and little Leia going around. We don't need a baby anything going <laughs> into a season two. Ewan McGregor is enough. Yeah. Obi-Wan is more than enough. I am really excited to see what they're going to do here. I know we're probably going to be waiting a while for some news, oh, yes. but that's okay. We had a very good finale. I mean, yeah, yeah, some questions, but a really fun journey. I'm super glad this show exists. Oh, me too. This was a really fun ride. Some of the absolute, like, just best fight scenes. I'm always going to be just like all about that Darth Vader Reva fight where he was just fighting her with a force against her lightsaber. It was such a 10 out of 10. The show had some moments that are going to stick with me forever. They're just excellent. I had so much fun. All right. Well, go ahead, hit that subscribe button because, you know, we're going to have a lot more fun talking about the rest of this Star Wars stuff as it kind of mm. comes down the pipeline. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you here for Andor in August.